people have asked me uh, what my interests were as a young person, I always had a feeling uh, for space and I've always felt that we're not alone, that uh, we uh, have people similar to ourselves in space. Mr Norris, you claim to have conclusive evidence of the existence of flying saucers. Now, uh, what is this evidence? Well, uh, some of the craft have dropped uh, metal objects from them. Uh, others have uh, dropped a frothy sort of substance which they call angel hair. This is quite a common thing. A silicon type of uh, material has come away from them. We've had the uh, fairy froth sort of stuff uh, analysed here in Adelaide and nobody could uh, tell us what they were. Now you're an ex-air um, uh, crew member of the Second World War and I dare say that during your period of service you would have seen a number of strange phenomena flying about. I did see my uh, first uh, object in 1942 in Geraldton in Western Australia. In 1942 I had a quite a, an experience with a sighting of a UFO and um, I was out on the tarmac uh, and it was about, it was after 8 o'clock and the night was quite dark. I saw, looked up and saw this thing which was, uh, uh, was spherical and around the edge of it, it had a purple hue. It was coming, obviously high up, but it appeared to be coming also at, at me. Sounds little strange to explain that, but uh, it, it was obvious to me uh, coming towards me. And I thought, well, what's that? And, um, you know, 1942, the uh, UFO phenomena was very rarely talked about. to convince the people that UFOs are for real and uh, the word uh, UFO means extraterrestrial craft and from my point of view but uh, the reason why we say uh, this is the season it's not the UFOs have been coming here all along but uh, people are outside more in the summer and they and so you expect to see more during the summer well I have to get more reports anyway in the early days when uh, a lot of my friends uh, school friends that knew dad was the UFO man uh, or the fly in those days are actually addressed more as flying saucer. So he was really addressed more as the flying saucer man. And of course that has all sorts of connotations. So uh, that kids at school would take the mickey out of me and that. And uh, of course, at first I probably used to get a little bit, uh, feel awkward about the whole situation. And I think that's only natural when you're a young kid because they're directing stuff at you, which is not really you. Have you ever been called an eccentric or indeed a crackpot? for holding these views? I certainly have. And in the early stages, uh, we were certainly called people sort of not all there. You know, as I often say to a lot of people, if you understood the facts, you wouldn't be so blasé about the whole thing. And that's really the crux of it. If you understand the facts, um, you can't be that blasé. I came out this morning to get the paper. And as I walked back, I noticed a circle on the lawn and uh, I was quite intrigued. I called my wife out and uh, She's got no explanation for it. Uh, as you can see, the grass has got the, uh, a circle around there and uh, it's actually dying off. It's, uh, and it wasn't like this yesterday morning because I had the sprinkler going on it. There has been some <coughs> suggestion that it could have been caused by a flying saucer. What do you say about that? I don't believe in flying saucers, but I've got no explanation for it. Uh, so I took the chance and rang uh, Colin Norris uh, this morning. He seemed quite interested when I described it to him and uh, I've got no explanation whatsoever for it. The markings on the ground, uh, craft coming in and doing rectangular turns or right angle turns or doing spectacular things, this is what it's all about. When my father experienced the uh, sighting in, in 1942, I think it was, he set up his um, organisation where he would go out and investigate 
UFO sightings. Basically, I guess the, the general rundown would be he would get a phone call, and this could be at all hours of the night and morning. Um, what he would do then is get the details from the person, or he would say this requires a little bit more investigation, it was something of significance. Um, so what he would do is often go out and interview the person, he would take along a, a, a tape recorder. About 12 years ago, these people had an object sitting over a sh the shed in the back of their house, on the house property, and uh, they got in touch with me about that. This person stepped back from this pine hedge onto the lawn. How was he dressed? Um, is, this, is this the person that you have drawn here? Had these most beautiful gloves. I've never seen anything like it. They were black. What sort, of, what sort of shapes, what sort of things have you seen? Well, the one up on the hill was a cigar-shaped, long cigar-shaped one. Has anyone seen these things with you? No, only the wife has seen them, yeah. Do you believe these and, reports uh, about the flying saucers? Copper. Oh, I don't only believe them. I, I, I know that these people are telling the absolute truth because they're dignified and wonderful people. What happened, again, just briefly, uh, in 1985? We started going on the highway out of Broken Hill. Turned around and um, I went and made my bed and as I was walking to the front, uh, to the back, I could hear like a whizzing, winding noise. I thought it was a, a helicopter or something. I said, Joe, I said, can you hear something like a helicopter? And um, I don't know, like a whizzing noise? No, it sounds like it's getting closer and closer. Joe goes, look at my instruments, they're all, I'm doing, I'm driving the bus and I'm steering, but if we were lifted off of the ground, it would be about knee high to waist high. And he, he got a bit frightened and he goes, look outside, look and see if you can see anything like that. And I said, all I can hear is an, uh, like a helicopter noise. The wheels are off the ground, the bus is knee high up in the air. Yeah. And he, he was turning the steering wheel, but the bus was still going straight? Or? It was just going straight, straight along the road. I said, I think that's a flying saucer. So far, the State Transport Department has issued 1,200 of the new plates. And since they went on issue yesterday, the orders have been pouring in again. People want these personalised number plates for all different sorts of reasons. Some people want to be identified, others want to identify their car if they have perhaps a, a special car. But take this one, for instance. This takes the cake. It belongs to flying saucer expert extraordinaire Colin Norris. Don't take them too seriously, but take his subject seriously. Um, because those that don't believe or aren't interested, you know, time will come where something will happen and they will become more interested. And as it was, as we start going to the moon, as we start going to Mars, suddenly those people that were probably very skeptical eh, start to turn around. Other reports that you've had of people actually seeing humanoids, uh, what do they suggest they could look like? Well, they look like you and I. Just like you and me. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, we have a range of people on our own planet. You know, we have uh, Negroids and we have Asian people and we have the Scandinavian people and we have pygmies. And so there's a fair range on our own little planet. So there's no reason why these people shouldn't be similar from outer space. These people are just basically the same as ourselves. One of the things I could say about Colin, I think the thing that gives him a lot of respect worldwide is the fact that his investigations are untainted. Uh, certain other organisations tend to put some sort of slant one way or the other on, on uh, an experience. Dad's idea was you go in there, you gather the information, you record the information, you document the information. Whatever you see, you get the basics of what it was. And what do you think it was? Well, I don't really know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't suppose I believe in... I believe there's probably life on other planet, but I don't really believe in UFOs, but there was definitely something metallic in the tree. What sort of theories do you have? On pure evolution, 
basis, there must be life on some of the planets. Possibly there are only a couple of hundred years in front of us in technology and able to do what we will eventually do. But I think it hurts our ego a little bit to think that they found us first. Colin, do you think most Australians believe in UFOs? Yes, I think that about 75% of the people today believe in UFOs. I saw this, uh, this plane looking type of object in the sky. I thought it'd just be a plane. But then no, I came across this and it didn't look like a plane at all. So I stopped the, oh, Paul stopped the car. We got out and had a look. And it was just really incredible because as soon as it went over the car, three beams of light, searchlights, just uh, looked as though they were just searching out into the sky. And what happened to the car when it, when it came over it? Well, um, the car that I was in, it um, jumped like, and I hopped when it started off. What do you think it was? Uh, I don't know if I could sort of call it a flying saucer, but definitely an unidentified flying object. Did you believe in them before you saw this? Oh, not really, but now I really do believe it because I'm positive it wasn't an aeroplane. It made no noise whatsoever. All I remember, I was in the bathroom and I heard this dreadful sound, roaring noise. Well, you've heard these suggestions that it might have been a flying saucer. What do you think about that? <clears throat> I wouldn't, I, I haven't got much interest in flying saucers really, to tell you the truth. But I thought it could have been a whirly wind. Colin, do you think in any way you've been influenced by people from outer space in choosing a car like this, a futuristically designed car? Well, I think my whole mental attitude is for futuristic things, but as far as being influenced, I don't know. I think uh, with the whole system of this planet, uh, we're in a hell of a mess, but I really feel that uh, we're being watched and I think they can see we're like a lot of mad things in a laboratory. I think they feel at this time that we need uh, some guidance. At 86 years of age, I've had the privilege of watching the state of this planet. This planet is disrespected by its inhabitants. If we don't love our own planet, we will wipe ourselves out. Extraterrestrials looking down on this planet I think we are a little primitive in our behaviour. We must try to love and learn how to treat other people before we uh, visit other systems and space and then we may get the privilege of meeting extraterrestrials. What sort of conversation would I have? It would be hello friend and welcome to our uh, planet would you like to have lunch? I think I'd be sociable. I urge you people to treat this planet well. ashtray and uh, and this is where you press it that flies away